This is your coding assistant that you can run locally on your computer. Welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use Wizard Coder, which is a local model that you can run on your machine. It was trained specifically to be really good at coding, and it is. I'm gonna show you how to download it, I'm gonna show you how to install it, and then we're gonna test it out all locally. And you can run this on your own machine. Let's go. This is a new model by Wizard LM, and Wizard LM released a pretty good model in the past, but now they have specifically fine-tuned it for coding problems. Here it says, to develop our Wizard Coder model, we begin by adapting our eVol Instruct method specifically for coding tasks. This involves tailoring the prompt to the domain of code-related instructions. Subsequently, we fine-tune the code LLM Star Coder utilizing the newly created instruction following training set. And it performs really well. It performs better than any other open source coding model, but it doesn't quite perform as well as GPT 3.5 and of course not as well as GPT 4. This is a 15 billion parameter model, which is kind of an odd number. It's usually 13, but that means this model will run on many local machines. And of course the bloke has a GPTQ version of it that we can download. This is going to be a quick tutorial, assuming you already have text gen web UI installed on your local machine. And if you don't check out this specific tutorial here. So once you have that done in your Conda environment, you're going to want to run Python Python space server.py, and that's right there, and that'll spin up the TextGen web UI server. Then, right here in the dropdown, you can see we now have the bloke Wizard Coder 15B model. We just click it and it loads up. I found this website, Python Principles, and it gives me a bunch of Python programming challenges. Now, as you can see, I already solved some of them. So it gives me a bunch of different challenges. It gives me the difficulty and it gives me the status. So if I look into this capital indexes and here it just describes the challenge and then I copied this, I pasted it in as the instruction. I made the max new tokens to 2000 and then I hit generate. The first thing you're gonna notice is that this model is very, very fast. And then what I notice is I sometimes get this weird output where it says one way to implement this solution is, and then it gives me this I am underscore SEP. I do not know why it does that, but it does do that sometimes. But what I've been able to do to solve that is simply remove the example and then rerun it. Let's take a look at some of the other ones. So here's a divisible by three problem and define a function named div3 that returns true if its single integer parameter is divisible by three and false otherwise. And here is the output that the model gave me. And so then I just hit run code and it says correct. And it even solved one of these harder ones. Define a function param count that takes a variable number of parameters. The function should return the number of arguments it was called with. And so there it is. Very simple code actually. Okay, let's try the hardest challenge on this website. Thousand separator, write a function named format number that takes a non-negative number as its only parameter. Your function should convert the number to a string and add commas as thousands separator. Okay, so I copy pasted the challenge here and I removed the example and here's the output I got. A very simple method. Now let's paste it back into the challenge. We're gonna run the code and there it is. Your solution was correct. Now let's try it with the example. Okay, so this one looks a lot different, much more complex, and I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, there's an error. So anytime you're running this, go ahead and just remove the example and keep things as simple as possible. Because we're talking about computer models, we don't need the example. Next, let's try our favorite. Let's write a Python version of the game Snake. To be honest, I don't think it's gonna be able to do this, but let's try anyways. Now, one big drawback about using these models through TextGen Web UI is that you only have a 2000 token limit. We do have this continue button here, here, but it only works sometimes. Okay, there, it stopped. So let's try using continue. All right, it seems to have worked. Let's try it out. Okay, so I pasted it in VS Code. I saved the file. Now let's see if it works. It does not work. Now I don't want to go back and forth trying to debug this. So it just didn't work. So what is this good for? If you have methods that you need to write that are somewhat on the small side, and even if they're really complex, it can do that for you. It's definitely not near the level of GPT 3.5 or GPT 4, but it's really good for something that you can run locally. And these local models just continue to get better. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you have any issues getting it set up, join me in the Discord. I'll try to help you out. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.